Hello, and welcome to Film Slam Streams Pulse Film Conversation for Tiger Eyes. My name is Eric Seiler. I'm a professor of film, media arts, and communications, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by the director of Tiger Eyes, Kelly Riot. Kelly is an Austin filmmaker who specializes in action and martial arts genre. In her teen, she moved to LA to get her start in the film industry as a hair and makeup artist for film, television, and music videos. She has gone on to work on numerous projects and she is now working consistently as a cinematographer and a director on multiple award-winning projects. Hello, Kelly, and welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, so good to have you. It is so good to have um, this wonderful film. I see you have it up on the screen behind you, Tiger Eyes. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, how did you come up with that name, Tiger Eyes? Is that con connected with your martial arts background? I absolutely love that you asked that. No one has asked it, that of me yet, and it's actually huge. Um, so basically, I train in martial arts, and um, it's called Tukong Masul, and Grandmaster Yi is the, um, our grandmaster of all Tukong, and he has this phrase all the time where it's Shisun, which is Tiger Eyes, and it's all about like, you know, you, sh you, uh, you, she sudden really means to look at something in a new light uh, differently, but it also means to look with, you know, like fierce eyes. And they always talk about that when you're doing your form work and stuff in, in, in martial arts. They're like, okay, you know, look you know, with your fierce tiger eyes. And, um, and that's what the whole, you know, film is all about. Father seeing the child through new eyes and the child finally showing his tiger eyes and looking at the world with his eyes. So yeah, that's where it kind of came up with that. <laughs> oh, good. Well, well, well done with that. So with that, so is that the inspiration for the film? Was it because of your martial arts or did, is this a, a story that you heard about? Tell us about how you came up with this idea. This film is um, in relation to, I basically wrote it about my nephew I kind of took a, uh, a, a time in his life when he was 10 years old, where um, his mother had, it was completely out of the, the picture and he was being raised by my brother, father. And um, he, his mother was the, um, the, she was Filipino, my brother is white. And so he didn't have any of this, this other half of his culture that he was learning. And uh, my brother was working 40 hours a week and he was just a single parent. And it was just really hard for him. And he was a latch, latch and key kid and he had all of these issues spurring from the loss of his mother. And it was just a particular time in his life when he was 10 that I decided to write about it. Um, I was having issues with just dealing with seeing my brother having issues and, and how to help him out. And it just, I needed, I mainly wrote the script to work through family issues. And in doing so, it actually turned out to be such a cute story. I sent it off to a couple of my friends that were in the industry, like, hey, I took a stab at writing a script finally. What you think? I think they'd be like, oh, that's so cute. But it really hit them hard. And they're like, you got to do something with this. And I was like, really? I mean, I just wrote it to like get through issues. I'm like, no, you got to do something. So that's kind of how that came about. So it's all, it's all um, reflective of my, my nephew's life. Well, interesting. So did your nephew see the film and what was his response to it? Not yet. Um, I, I don't know what I'm waiting for, honestly. Um, he's 12 now. So he's kind of going through this like awkward, you know, preteen, you know, rebel stage but I should I should definitely I need to show it to him I plan on very very soon I think I just wanted to like because it's a very touchy subject it's 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 taking his personal life and his personal issues and like literally telling the world about it um so I don't know how he's going to react um but um it so I guess that's mainly why I haven't shown it to him yet but I will I will and my brother hasn't seen it either Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Even though I interview him at the end, but he knows about it. Um, we used his house to film in the house location um, for the home. So he knows about it. He just hasn't seen it yet. I'll eventually show him. <laughs> yeah, he'll, 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 he'll see it eventually. I'm sure that he and his son will both love it. So tell us a little bit. How did you, 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 I know you started off doing hair and makeup 
and now you're more into cinematography and now directing and so forth. So how did you make that transition? Is that is the script something that motivated you to make the transition? Tell us a little bit about that. I started making the transition from makeup to directing basically uh, about five years ago. I was in LA and I was getting into my 30s and they were like, makeup girl, makeup girl. And I was like, oh, makeup girl. Am I gonna be makeup girl for like the rest of my life? You know, and then I started making me think about like what I wanted to do and how I realized when I was on set, I really wanted to like step in and be like, ooh, you should do this, you should do that. And I was like, oh man, ooh, I think I should probably maybe start looking at some other departments. And I started kind of checking out um, other people on set and realizing very quickly that I'm all about the photography end of it and getting the, 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 the framing just right and the camera movements and then telling the stories. And then I was like, ooh, maybe I should like direct. But just straight up becoming a director wasn't like, it was like jumping in the deep end of the pool. So I went ahead and studied up on photography and camera work and started really, cause no one was gonna give me a chance really to just direct someone who's never directed before. So I started making my own films. I just got a camera, I saved up a bunch of money, bought a camera, started shooting my own stuff. And from there people are like, oh, that looks really good. Why don't you shoot my thing? And so it kind of, uh, uh, domino affected into getting enough money and, and having enough connections to go, hey, this is my story. I want to direct it. Um, let me use your money to do this. And so that's kind of how I went into going into directing. So I would say right now in my career, I direct about 50% of my projects. And then I, I'm a cinematographer about the other 50%. So. Uh, well, that's a, a really um, great story about how you transition into that and you have a keen eye for that hair and makeup too <laughs> and you're oh, no one pulls a fast one over over <laughs> on me they're like oh 20 more minutes for makeup i'll be like no no five. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so let's talk a little bit about the film itself it's such a endearing story and it's something as you said earlier that people can really relate to um in that sense uh we see the, uh, well, one thing that was very noticeable was that the um, boy in the film really talked. He only said like, uh, yes, sir, or yes, a couple of times, and that was it. That was intentional. Why did you choose to tell the story in that fashion? It was directly related to the fact that my nephew is the exact same way. He is a very, he, he grew up with his mother being first generation from the Philippines here um, when she was around when um, she she had uh, left or she was out of their lives when, when at age six. So from from being born to age six, she was speaking a lot of, you know, in an, another language and um, she her communication skills were very limited to him in particular. And then he has this father who's just a very stoic person naturally. And he, he's not a conversationalist. You know, he says he, he says what he wants him to do and then, and then he moves on, you know, did you eat, blah, blah, blah. So, and that you kind of notice that in the film, like the father's very kind of like barks these orders out in a loving way, but still like, but he's very, very focused on his work. And um, my nephew's just, he's a quiet kid. He's, he's a, almost mute because of it. He's just not, he doesn't have that, he never had that talking back and forth growing up. And he, he still has it to this very day. He's 12 and he's just now getting out of his shell. So it was just based on from, from him, really. Uh, most every decision I made in this film is 100% is from real life. I see. Okay. Well, good inspiration there. Um, we're about halfway through our conversation with the director of Tiger Eyes, Kelly Riot. If you have questions, please put them in the QA portal and we'll get to them as time allows. Um, one thing about um, uh, your nephew being quiet and the uh, main character being quiet is that shows like a silent strength that he has. We saw all the things that he, you know, went through with the, um, um, you know, wanted to approach the girl and you know, saving his lunch money and so forth. So that was really, you put a lot of little details in there. Are there some details in there that you've left out or you wish you had to put in to even make the story stronger? Yeah, there is one that was left on the cutting room floor 
that I just couldn't squeeze in. There wasn't enough time and I did not want to make a 40 minute film. Um, and if I had more money and more time, I would have done, and it was a feature, I would definitely add it in. And it was him saving his lunch money up to, uh, you know, in the film, I'd had that in there, saving his lunch money up to, to like, kind of like attempt to pay for these lessons. But there was a scene where his dad was yelling at him and he was, you know, it shows throughout the film that he's not eating his lunches. He's, he's going straight to martial arts after school and he comes home and he scarfs down his food. Well, this, he had a big, huge belt test where you, if anyone's ever had a belt test, it's like you really exert yourself. And so he came home starving. And there was a scene where he's supposed to look over at his food and then look that's like ready for him. That's kind of cold. That's been sitting there because his dad prepared it for him. And he looks back at his dad and he keeps looking at his food. And I just had to cut that out. It was just not enough time. And it didn't, didn't quite mix right in, in the edit. So that one, that I definitely cut out. <laughs> All right. All right. Fair enough. We do have a question that's come in and someone wants to know, did you um, ever consider casting your nephew in this film? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, in an ideal world, I would have loved that. But unfortunately, he... He is not an entertainer. <laughs> he is very shy. He is mute, you know, like not really mute, but he is, doesn't talk much. He doesn't communicate much. And he, these are feelings that he's still, he's still working through these issues. You know, at the end of the film, I have it kind of come to a, to a, a happy ending, but in real life, it hasn't quite done that yet. And so I think it would be very difficult for him to try to face these emotions and work through them on camera. And um, I train with um, this uh, woman, Beverly, who is literally the exact same. He, he, she, she's Filipino, her husband's Caucasian, and um, their child is like a big ham. He is so, he's just such a natural actor. And he was like the right age and he knew martial arts. And so he just ended up being organically perfect for the part. And he's not really normally an actor, but I had to do a screen test with him at first um, to make sure that he could, could take it. Cause it takes a lot. I mean, it's, you ask a lot of kids for them to be working the hours that they work in front of the camera. <laughs> right. Absolutely. He showed a lot of, um, he was very believable. You know, you actually be believed him as the character. That was really good. Just the emotions he had to display. Like when he came home at the end, after he, um, passed his belt test, he was afraid that his dad was going to be mad at him, but he had to like react and eat the pizza and so forth. Yeah. yeah. So another question we have coming in is, um, oh, they say, I really enjoyed the film. It talked about love, acceptance, affirm and affirmation. Is there anything else that you wanted um, us to get out of the film? The film was mainly written for very open-ended. Uh, where whatever you bring to it, you get out of it. So, um, and I did that on purpose. So it's kind of, there's so many different routes. For instance, um, the person who produced it, who gave me the money for it, she's a single parent and she has a child who, it was through a, a horrible, not a horrible, but a, a sloppy divorce where her child is a little bit mute from, from like all of it and not, not doesn't like to communicate very well. And um, so she got that single parent vibe from it of like how, you know, you try to do your best, but, and, and you can see someone every day, but you don't truly see them, you know, until something happens. So she got that out of it. Um, you know, you have martial arts um, people who some, you know, being in a single parent uh, or just, just being, you know, biracial or whatever, they, they find a path. They find they're kind of floundering about in life and they're not really quite getting it at home. Parents don't quite know how to handle that. So they go to the martial arts and they get that path and that's kind of another another route. And then actually my colorist um, for the film, he, he, uh, he got um, the little boy, um, the Quentin character having a crush actually on a little boy. Um, in the film, because one of the main kid at the very end, the, the, the popular kids that he was avoiding the whole time um, to have enough, to be able to have that tiger eyes, to be able to walk past them and then up to them. Um, I chose a little, another little biracial boy for for that whole thing. And my colorist actually got out of it. They had a crush on a little boy. Um, so it was like really interesting that people get out of it what they they brought into it. So there really wasn't any 
direct thing that I needed, I wanted to really pinpoint just all of the above, just telling this beautiful story of compassion and, and love and, and, you know, focus. <laughs> Uh, I, I, exactly, and I just want to add that the uh, um, the dad was really convincing. You did not want us to like him. Um, I hope your brother isn't too offended by that. <laughs> the way he sees it. So uh, before I let you go, what's next for you? What can we expect to see from you in the near future? I am currently uh, we're in uh, the very very baby beginnings of. Uh, pre-pro on a historical film about World War, World War II um, about the women and the pilots that were a part of it that no one ever talks about. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that. I can't say any more, but that's what I'm, that's, that's my next big thing. All right. Okay. Yes. Um, we look forward to it. You can't say anything more, just like Quinn. You're not going to say too much. We just lack the actions, that's all. <laughs> well, Kelly, this has been such a pleasure of speaking with you. We wish you all the best. Congratulations on the success of this film. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to our audience for joining us for this important and invigorating conversation. For more information about the current 45th Cleveland International Film Festival or upcoming film festivals, please visit clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you. <laughs>